Hello. If you're like me, you bought one of these Android handhelds and a dock to go with it and you found out that it kind of sucks. You keep having to get up from the sofa or wherever you're playing and keep touching the screen, interacting with Android. I mean, even in handheld mode, just to change the brightness, I have to go into these menus, get the screen all dirty with my fingers. And it just takes away from that gaming device feel, it makes it feel like a phone with controls slapped on. But there is a way around this, and it's using a key mapper. So I'll just demonstrate some things I've got. So I've got volume, which is quite useful for docked mode. I've got brightness, which is useful for handheld mode. I've got in-game stuff as well, so I'll just show you that. Let's just say we're in a, on a TV right now. I go into a game. Oh, the controller's not connected. There we go. So first of all, this button, instead of either doing nothing or going home, which it usually does, it's actually got a function now. It brings up the menu. And you can also close out with this shortcut and it kills the app. And this works on handheld as well, I'll just show you. I've got it set up slightly differently. So if you just double click, there you go. So you don't have a bunch of apps clogging up if you use the normal quit out mode on the handheld and you can actually close apps with your external controller and change volume or whatever else you decide to set up. So I'll just show you how that's working. This is using the app Key Mapper. I'll just show you that on the Play Store so you know which one to get. Yep, there it is, key mapper and floating buttons. So download that, install it, and then you're presented with this. So you want to go to the plus, and this is where you make it happen. So I'll just show you some of the ones I have. So I've got button mode, that's this button, or even on a PS2 controller, it's this one. And I, so you just click record trigger, press the button, and oh, it's going to give me an error here, never mind. I've already got it set. And then I would select any device from the cog menu. And for this one, I would remap. So I'd leave this box unticked because I never really have a function for just the normal home menu. I either want to kill the app or go back. You can set it up how you like. Then go over to Actions, uh, Add Action, Go Back is right there. So you just click that, tick Done. I've got two now. So click Done and that's set up. So now you'll be able to open up menus uh, with these buttons in apps like uh, NeverSX2 or Dolphin. I also have it I have constraint on this to not run if the IG show is open just to just because of the back button already functions on the B button there. It's already so it's not necessary. Okay, what else? Double press home for the retroid. Uh yeah. I've asked this one not to remap so that the home button still functions normally. Actions, open recents, you find that in this menu. Wait, uh, one second, just to give it time to play the animation. Swipe with those coordinates. I'll just show you how you do a swipe. Don't bother guessing the coordinates, select a screenshot. So take a screenshot of your app switcher, go down. I want to start there because we want to dismiss whatever app is present in the middle. End coordinate, tick up there, just so it's a full swipe away. Swipe duration, 200, I think mine's on 300. 
I don't think it really matters, it works. And tick. I've already got mine, so I won't. Then you want to wait a second and a half. Just to let that animation play out and look nice and smooth. And then you want to tap the screen. And I'll show you that. Again, same way. Select screenshot. Tap somewhere up here. Don't do to the sides. You'll end up uh, tabbing into whatever app is on the side. And tick that box. And then you're done with that. So if I go back. Then what I would do is I would duplicate that. And change the trigger for your external controllers. So you can do, I've done select and the uh, middle button, the home button. Oh, what's going on? There you go. Uh, I've not remapped these, so I've gone into the cog and I've clicked don't remap. And then it's, from there, because we duplicated, it's all set up for us. We don't need to do anything. So that's nice. The increase, decrease brightness are really simple. Again, set your trigger up to whatever you want it to be. Uh, and just, just decrease brightness, increase brightness. Then we've got volume. I changed a few of the settings here to make it look a bit nicer. So if you go settings, repeat every 300 milliseconds and delay that 500. Uh, tick repeat as well. That just makes it um, more convenient. You can just hold it and it goes in these nice increments. So I like that. Yeah, that's that one. Again, it's just the same for up and down. And then if your front end plays a sound for any of these trigger buttons, I would recommend, oh, sorry, yeah, hotkey buttons, whatever. Just uh, binding that to do nothing while with a constraint for while the app is in the foreground. So just like that. And that will stop it from inputting constantly while you hold it down to increase and decrease. Okay, so that's that set up. So now you should be able to close out apps really nicely. You don't have to touch the screen. You don't have to touch the screen to do brightness. You don't have to get up touch the device to do oh, to do volume or to again access menus or quit out of apps although there's one more step because if you then close that app it will stop working so you if you don't want to leave it running all the time uh, at least on the Retro Pocket 5, you can go into your settings, handheld settings, go down to advanced, whitelist, and whitelist all the apps you want to constantly run. Uh, that way, they'll work without them being open. Uh, I'm sure other devices will have this too. It might be called optimization, battery optimization, something like that. Just a way so that the app can always run. Anyway, I hope that helps you set up your device for a more handheldy experience, uh, improve, improve your docked experience so you don't have to keep getting up to change games or change settings. Of course you can set anything you like. Um, you could do dark modes, triggered by anything like pressing these both together, anything like that. So yeah, I hope that helps. And uh, thank you for watching. Bye.